Welcome to Every Nation Swane, Willow's online service. We are part of a global family that makes disciples, raises leaders, and plots churches and campus ministries in every nation. We are so glad that you are here to join us. If you're joining us for the very first time, welcome. We do have a link within the comment section. You can go ahead and check that out. We'd love to learn who you are and you can find out more about who we are as a spiritual family. A big congratulations to any of you who celebrated something in the past week. Please do let us know in the comments. We'd love to celebrate with you. We're excited to announce that our devotions will be having a bit of a shakeup. A lot more people are going to work and going to school, so they can't tune in to the times that we previously had. We will now be having our Tuesday devotionals from 7 to 7.30 in the morning, and on Thursdays from half past 8 in the evening to 9 p.m. All will still be on our Every Nation Willows PM Instagram page, as well as our live Facebook page. So do tune in. Just a reminder that our Helping Without Hurting training will be taking place for six weeks from the 18th of August. The Helping Without Hurting training is designed to help Christians think differently about poverty and to take a generous, relational, prayerful and patient approach to poverty alleviation. Some questions we ask, how can I help? What if I help and a certain person does this or that? These are some of the questions that the training will address. On top of that, there will be additional resources available on the Every Nation Twenty website. Now we're super excited because we will be having our Every Nation Willows PM online Zoom social. Now we're not physically meeting, but we'll still be meeting. On the 28th of August, 7 p.m., more details will follow on our WhatsApp community group. Do stay tuned for that. Now with that, I'm going to transition over. Let us turn our focus to God as we enter a time of worship. Hi everyone, my name is Riani. As I was preparing over this week for today, I really felt on my heart that no matter what we're going through, no matter what type of day you're having even, you can choose to see God's goodness in that day. You can choose to proclaim God's goodness. So in light thereof, won't you just join me in standing up, get a little groove going and let's proclaim that God is good.
Jesus, we love you. Thank you that, that you are part of our lives, that we can look to you. We can look to you for vision. We can look to you for wisdom. Thank you that we can know you and that you reign. You reign forever. You reign in all situations. You reign over our lives. And we just declare that tonight. Thank you, worship team. Always amazing to hear from you guys, friends and family. It's my honor to introduce our guest pastor for this evening, Pastor Joey Bonifacio, all the way from Singapore. Pastor Joey is part of our international apostolic ministry team and also an author of six books of one is The Lego Principle, in which he just describes uh, the principles of discipleship, a value that we truly hold so dearly at every nation. Pastor Joey, we are so excited to have you with us and honorable to have you with us as well. And let us, before we start, just go into a moment of prayer. Father, I want to thank you for Pastor Joey's life. I want to thank you for this opportunity to hear from you. Thank you that you've revealed yourself in your scriptures to us. And Father, may you come and open our hearts tonight to us. May you come and dissect our hearts so we can accept your truth in love. And may this just truly live into a space of evangelism into a space of the gospel being unlocked as we've seen in this week with our leaders ignite themed empower unlocking the gospel we know that you are not locked into this lockdown period but father you extend above all time matter and space and may this truly just honor you and you alone in your mighty name we ask this amen Greetings, every nation, Pretoria. This is Joey Bonifacio greeting you from Singapore. I want to greet your pastor, Pastor Philip Pretorius. Not very many churches have, are in the city, Pretoria, and with a pastor named Pretorius. Once upon a time, I was in a city called Fort Bonifacio, and I was a pastor there. Rare for having something like someone like Pastor Philip. Greetings to all of you. Before I get into the word this morning, let me give you a quick introduction of my family. This picture that you see here is of my oldest son, his wife, and at that time, his one son. And what he did was everywhere he went, he took a picture of his wife and his son on top of him. And he would do this everywhere in different parts of the world, different buildings, sometimes in mountaintops and, and all of that. And now, just recently, about a year ago, he had another child, and I guess that practice is over I'm not going to do that anymore because he can't have that baby on top of his other son. My second son, David, is this picture with his son, Elijah. My third son is Joshua, and he's got two children. One is Lucas, and the other one is Sophie. These are my five grandchildren, my three sons, and my three daughters-in-law. And I want to let you know that families and life is next to Jesus is what it's all about. My message today is connected to the time when I was very young. This is a picture of me when I was very young. I was 19 years old, and I had a very complicated life. And in that process, I knew that the only way to live life was to turn things simple. I want to talk to you today about simple faith. A few years ago, I wrote a book called The Lego Principle, and the idea behind that was to have simple faith. One of the sections in that book, the third section of the book, is about simple means, clear values. The entire section on values is rooted in this, this teaching I'm about to teach you. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, it says, Do not lay for yourselves treasures. These are values. And it says that where you lay them up or where you store them matters. If you store them on earth, then it can be stolen and rust can destroy it. But if you store them in these treasures in heaven, they cannot be stolen and thieves cannot break in and steal. 
Further, it says down in verse 21, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Three times the Bible tells us this word treasure, treasure, and treasure. Jesus is highlighting the importance of these treasures or these values. Then he goes on to say, isn't God more valuable than money that you can't serve him? You cannot serve God or money. These are our finances. Then he says, your life isn't life more important than food. He's talking about the word life here is the word suke, that which has breath, not zoe, a God kind of life, not bios, which is a physical life, but relationships the people around you that have breath. And he's saying, isn't life more important than food or trophy? What you consume, what you enjoy, what fulfills you? He goes on to ask the question, isn't your body more important than clothes? He's talking about health. And the other side of that is clothes or things or in Duma. Now, the Bible tells us that these are ultimately what's valuable. God, relationships, health, and finances or money, that if all of these four values were working in our lives, then food would be easy. The reality is food is not as valuable because they can disappear overnight. The best food that you can ever eat, built on for that matter, in six hours will all look like and smell alike. Then you have clothes that are out of fashion even today with COVID. Ultimately, the only thing that's really valuable are God, our relationships, our health, and our finances. A good way of looking at this would be like a bucket, a bucket that has three sides. One side will be our relationships, the other side would be our health, and the other side would be our finances. Now, it doesn't matter if all of these sides were working. If the bottom of the bucket was, had a hole in it, everything we put in there is going to go through, and that's why we need the foundation of God. The spiritual, more than just the relational, more than just the physical, and more than just the financial. A better way of looking at this is to look at these things from the perspective of as you put things in life, if one side of this bucket is not very strong or one side is very strong and another side is not very strong, then that's where the quality of your life diminishes because at some point, all of these things must come together. And thus, we need God because he said if we seek God first and his righteousness, all these things will be given to us as well. Now, values do overlap, and simple means it's not easy. It's not easy to make our relationships, our health, our finances, and even our spiritual life work. A good way of looking at that would be to look at the bucket from a top view. Think about how to make your marriage work. I'm still trying to make mine, celebrating 38 years this year. Apart from the grace of God, it's next to impossible to make that happen. Think about having the children that I just showed you. And obviously, everybody has issues and problems, small and big. But the point is, it's next to impossible. Now, think about your key relationships, the staff that you work with, the the people that you do business with. Relationships are not easy. Start thinking about your health and the need for nutrition, the need for rest, and the need for exercise. And now start thinking about how much you earn in a COVID situation, how much you save, and where to invest. The problem we have is we often put, not God, in the bottom, but we put ourselves. And so the pressure of all of this starts to build up because it's me trying to carry my marriage, my family, my key relationships, my nutrition, my rest. Not that you shouldn't be responsible for these things, but you need to put God first. The question is, how do you do that? How do I put God first? Well, the key is to pray. When you pray, what you're effectively doing is you're saying, God, I know I can't make this day work without you. Fact, I don't even want to start the day without you. Today, I prayed multiple times, and despite all of that, there were still issues. That means I need to never stop praying because praying takes my mind away from God. And every time I pray, there's a stability in my life that stands ready to face whatever it is I'm going through. Secondly, I meditate on the word. That is a powerful truth. Every time you have stress and every time you have issues in life, you meditate on the word of God and that mind becomes stayed. It stops. It stops wandering around and running amok and worrying about things it shouldn't worry about because God said, if you worry about anything, do not worry about anything. But in everything through prayer 
and petition and thanksgiving, make your request known to God and his peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. And thirdly is to proclaim the gospel, to keep reminding yourself that there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. And lastly, to learn how to fellowship with other believers. In short, while treasures or values are important and that they overlap, they're simply not easy. The reason why it's not easy is while we want to pray and meditate and proclaim the gospel and fellowship with others, it's not easy because we have formed habits. There's an interesting verse in the book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 4, where it says their deeds, in other words, their works, their actions, or their habits do not permit them to return to God because of a spirit of whoredom. This verse captures the connection between the spirit and our habits. And habits are formed, and when habits are formed, they're hard to change. To change habits, we need to start with a discovery. Habits, good or bad, are formed through discovery. We find that in Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. It says, God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open. That's, by the way, the word discovery. This, meaning to remove, cover means to remove the cover. Remove the cover from your eyes, and then you have a discovery. A child discovers crayons or candy or things, and we discover all sorts of things when our eyes are open to it. Now, notice where it says they discovered knowing good and evil. In other words, habits are both good and evil. The same way the discoveries are both good and evil. The next stage of a discovery becomes desire. When we discover something, think sugar for your children, and you put that sugar in a two-year-old child, you see, ding, the discovery causes that child to have an internal desire, and habit is on its way. Notice where it says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, when the woman saw discovery, the tree was good for food, that it was a delight to the eyes. There it is again. The discovery is a delight to the eyes. The next stage is they desire the fruit because that's how it works. That's how habits are shaped. We discover, we desire, and finally we make a decision. And notice down in chapter 3, verse 6, the second half, she took some of the fruit, and ate it, and she also gave some of the fruit to her husband, and he ate. Just to be clear, sometimes people think that Eve was the only one responsible for sin. I quite don't agree with that. I actually think Adam wanted to eat the fruit himself. Notice he's been there. He's standing there right there. If there was a CCTV camera of this thing, they would see that Adam was actually holding the ladder as Eve was taking the fruit. Because I believe that Adam wanted to eat for himself, but decided let's just let her eat it for us to see if she'll die. (laughs) Now, discovery, desire, decision becomes a delight. When something becomes a delight, it becomes a very powerful thing. It becomes something that we begin to enjoy. And that habit begins to shape. It works for good or for bad. Think about a child who discovered swimming. At a young age, it became a desire, became a decision, and now he's simply enjoying it. And now, the same thing with a bad habit. Think about a person who discovered pornography and began to desire it and made a decision to follow it, and now he's just enjoying it. Whether good or bad, habits are formed. And many times we think our issues are spiritual when they really are habitual. Notice where it says, discovery, desire, we make a decision, it becomes a delight, and finally, it becomes a devotion. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15, in the King James Version of the Bible, it says, I beseech you, brethren, you know that the house of Stephanus, that is the first fruits of Achaia, that they have been addicted. Notice the word addicted in the King James Version. In the present day version, it says, they were devoted themselves to the ministers. In other words, devotion is simply addiction. When something that you really want to keep doing and are willing to pay the price to do it no matter what, The result is destiny. It just becomes who you are. This is the trajectory of a habit. We begin with a discovery. It becomes a desire. We make a decision. It becomes a delight. It becomes a devotion. And finally, it becomes our destiny. The only way out of this is that when you get here, when you get a new habit, you discover something new, something better. Sometimes we discover God, we discover the Bible, we desire the Bible, we decide to follow the Bible, and we decide to want to pray and meditate and proclaim the gospel and to fellowship. But the next stage is not delight. It's actually a dip. And what happens next is what we call the loop. 
the loop or AKA the treadmill of the New Year's resolution. Same discovery, same desire, same decision. You're just going around because you feel like you're moving, but destiny is not being shaped. The life that you have in Christ is not becoming a delight, a devotion, and a destiny. And over time, it not just becomes a dip, you begin to drop out. What do you do then when a situation like this emerges? Well, go for a discovery, get the desire, make a decision, but the next stage is to die to yourself. This is the way of the disciple. Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone should come after me, let him deny himself and pick up his cross or die to himself. The way of the disciple is death because the way of the disciple is resurrection. When we die to ourselves, by the way, resurrection is not when you die physically. It's when you die to all things that are not of God and you're resurrected into a new delight. That new delight causes you to follow Jesus causes you to have delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the real desires of your heart. This becomes the new addiction, the new devotion that Paul said, do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit because there's such thing, something just as addictive to wine as there is to the Spirit of God. And finally, that becomes our destiny. Now, you'll find in John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief comes to steal to kill, and to destroy you. Bible says, Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it abundantly. Notice he talks about this abundant life. The abundant life, by the way, is defined as the peri sauce life. Not the peri peri sauce life of South Africa, but the peri sauce life, which is a life of abundance, a, 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 a life of advantage, uh, fruitfulness that God gives us. But the Bible also tells us that there's a thief. And what does the thief do? He steals. And what does he steal? What's valuable. And what we figured out is God is the most valuable. So he wants to steal our peri sauce life. He wants to steal everything that we have. He wants to steal our marriage, our key relationships, our family, our nutrition, our health, our finances. He wants to do that. And the way he does that is by stealing our relationship with God. How does he do that? First of all, he tempts us. That's what temptation is. That's his name. The thief's name is tempter. Once we bite into that fruit, then we become deceived. That's his second name, deceiver. And deception is what his game is. The third thing that happens is now, because we've been tempted and deceived, we're now condemned. We feel rotten. We feel rotten on the inside because we realize we're no good. And so we need God. And the way you overcome the tempter or the thief is to pray. The Bible says if we watch and pray, then we will not fall into temptation. Prayer is so critical because that's how you cause the thief not to rob you. Meditation on the Word of God is the truth. Meditating on the Word is key because you negate the deceiver. Proclaiming the gospel is how you get out of condemnation. Because the Bible says there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. The last name of the devil is not just tempter, deceiver, or the adversary or the enemy, is that he is the accuser. And he causes us to accuse one another so that we can be isolated. And the way to overcome that is to fellowship with other believers. The keys to being, having the life that's full is simple. And simple simply means have very clear values. Form the right habits. And the key to that is to die to yourself. God bless you guys. Thank you, Pastor Joey, for that message. It's truly just honorable to hear from you. And thank you for taking the time to share with us this evening. Friends, through this sermon, I was just led to a scripture and I want to share with you. It's out of Luke 14, verse 26 to 27, and it reads the following. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, and yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Now friends, why I share this, this is not out of a place of condemnation. In this space, Jesus was speaking to the masses and as he did there, he's calling you to a deeper connection today. A connection past the superficial excitement of meeting him the first time. On the way to the sermon, yeah, I actually drove past 
a crossing where I lost a friend 10 years ago at the ripe age of 18 years old. And in that, I want to urge you, I want to urge you to not wait till it's too late. I want to urge you to take up the call to go deeper into a relationship with God. Let's not be stuck in that loop of mild Christians, but let's be alive for the gospel, to unlock the gospel in this time with so many people that need to hear this gospel. We're in a burning house and it's out of love that we can save others with this. I want to urge you, friends, take up this call, take up your cross and follow Jesus. It's out of this space that we see that we can move into a space of desire with for God, where we can move into a space of devotion with God and ultimately our destiny with Jesus. Let's just pray into this. Father, I thank you so much for your word today. I thank you so much for your truth. I thank you that you sent your son to live the life that we should have lived. And die on the cross that we should have died, Father. I thank you for Pastor Joey and the truth that he's brought to us today. Thank you that we can see that out of a space of prayer, out of a space of devotion and time with you, we can go deeper. We can go into true purpose. We can go into true meaning, which leads to a balanced lifestyle. Father, all we want is you. You are enough. You are more than enough. May our lives reflect the love that it may even seem that we hate others. That great our love is for you. May we love on every person that we meet. May we be the hands and feet of Jesus in this world that is calling for purpose. And may we be a people with a zeal for your name. Calling out against the injustices of people. Against the injustices against your name. The only authority in heaven and on earth. You are a good father. You are a loving father. I ask that you be with every person that is listening to this. Every person that is watching this sermon. May you protect them, Father. May you bless them. May your face shine upon them. And may you save them from their eternal damnation, Father. You are a good father. And we thank you so much for all your love and all your provision. Not, with the, not that we deserve any of it. But only because your scriptures say we may come to you and ask and therefore we come to you. May we find a joy and a comfort in your name that we look to the fields and we can have content in this day. May we look to the lilies and see that they don't worry about tomorrow. And that we can find you in the midst of our lives today. Go with us, be with us and reveal yourself to us. In your mighty name we ask this. Amen.